Check, check. Check, check. Well, good morning, Streams Church. It's 11 o'clock. It's my favorite time on a Sunday. <laughs> um, we just had an amazing weekend at the, with the Joy for Morning conference, and this room got soaked in the presence of the Lord. And I am so grateful that this morning we don't just get the leftovers of that, but that he wants to add more. And that he has a plan for this morning and for the people in this room now that is special and set apart. And so will you stand with me as we begin to worship and just hold out your hands as we pray. Holy Spirit, we invite you. Holy Spirit, we invite you to fall afresh in this place. We open our hearts to you. We set our gaze on you and we set everything else aside. We set aside our plans for the rest of the day. We set aside um, the distractions tugging at us. And we set aside this time for you, Jesus. This is for you, Jesus. And your presence is enough for this moment. Your presence is enough for us. It doesn't matter what we sing. It doesn't matter what we pray or say. It doesn't matter um, whatever else happens. Jesus, your presence being here is enough for us. It's all we need. So we invite your presence. We invite your presence. Would you begin to lift up your voice in worship right now, just with thanks and gratitude? Whether you were at the conference this weekend or not, he's working in your life. He's moving in your life. And so Jesus, we say thank you for that. Jesus, we say thank you. enter your gates with thanksgiving this morning and we say thank you oh we say thank you oh we say thank you begin to lift up your voice and say thank you let it come out of your own mouth we say thank you
to you. We make space, we make room. How we long to be close to you. We make space, we make room. We have come to yield to you. We make space, we make room. How we long to be close to you. give you room, Jesus, to do what you want to do. We give you room, Jesus, come do what you want to do. We make space for your joy. Yeah. We make space for your joy. Make space for you. We make space for you. Come and move. We make space for you. We make space for you. Here to say we love you. Oh, how we love you. Oh, how we love you. How we love you. Oh, how we love you. Who else would rocks cry out to worship? Whose glory taught the stars to shine Perhaps creation longs to have the words to sing But this joy is mine Let's sing that again Who else would rocks cry out to worship Whose glory taught the stars to shine Perhaps creation longs to have the words to sing But this joy is mine So with a thousand hallelujahs We magnify your name you alone deserve the glory, the honor, and the praise. Lord Jesus, this song is forever yours. A thousand hallelujahs and a thousand more. Who else would die for
darkest day in history There on a cross they made for sinners For every curse is blood at home One final breath and it was finished not the end we could have known For in the earth began to shake And the veil was torn But sacrifice was made As the heavens rose
I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a dry and weary land where there is no water. So I have looked upon you in the sanctuary, beholding your power and glory. Because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will praise you. So I will bless you as long as I live. In your name, I will lift up my hands. My soul will be satisfied as with fat and rich food. Come on. And my mouth will praise you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the watches of the night. For you have been my help. And in the shadow of your wings, I will sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you that you uphold us, God. Thank you, Jesus, that you satisfy. God, nothing satisfies like you. Nothing satisfies like you, God. You and you alone are worthy of our praise. You're so worthy, God. Holy, 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 holy are you, Jesus. Jesus. As if we haven't already done it, God, we welcome you. We want more of you, God. We want to sit in your presence and gaze at your face. Holy, holy are you, God. Holy are you. Our hearts beat for you. My heart is beating out of my chest. My heart beats and longs for you, God. And you satisfy. Thank you that our longing is not unmet. But God, you show up and you meet us right in this place. And that's why our heart beats for you, God. Because you're so faithful. And you're so good. And you're so kind. Thank you, Lord. You are worthy, God. Jesus. We worship you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Church, would you give him a big, I love you, and just a big shout of praise this morning. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Well, good morning. Thank you. (laughs) We could sit in that. We could always sit in that. So good. So good. Well, we welcome you to Streams Church this morning. For those of you that are in the room, welcome. For those of you that are joining us online, welcome. Our, the desire of our heart is to pray for you, is to contend for you. We are a family here. We are a community. So if you are a first-time guest, we would love for you to, there's a card out in the hall. And on the back side, there's an opportunity for you to write down any prayer requests that you might have. And we do pray over those. If you are a regular attender and you have prayer requests and you haven't been able to share that, or it's just something that you really want us to contend for during the week, can also complete those and you can put those in the boxes that is a priority for us we want to give you an opportunity to continue in your worship to the lord and so in and so um, for those of you that are here regularly your tithes and offerings you know how to do that for those of you that just want to sow in today and give a gift we have lots of ways that you can do that there's a little sticker on the back of your on the back of the chair in front of you on most of the chairs and there's a little qr code so you can do it that way or you can text to give you can you guys can see all of these great options you can drop something in one of the boxes actually one box that's right out there or you can go to the website but let me just bless that and then we'll move to the next thing so father we thank you god we thank you that you are provider we thank you even in those moments where it can feel lord bleak where we're like Will we be able to do this? Will we be able to step into that? God, you meet needs. And your word says that you care. You care that if you feed the birds, God, that you care if you clothe. Maybe that's it. (laughs) If you clothe them, Lord, then we are so much more even taken care of. So we thank you for that. 
So Father, as we come with our tithes and offerings to you, we ask, Lord, that you would bless it, that you would bless the giver, but that you would also give us wisdom to steward what you are giving us. We love you. It is an act of worship that we give from. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so we have a couple of announcements this morning. The first is that this next weekend is our Encounter and Gathering. Who has been to Encounter Gathering? Give me a shout. It's so awesome, right? It's such a gift. And so our Encounter teams are here from 1 to 4 on the third Saturday of the month. And you can come in and just soak in worship, and then a team will come and get you and minister to you. So those teams do dream interpretation, give prophetic words, they do uh, they pray for physical healing, and they pray for emotional healing, kind of like inner healing moments. We've had so much fruit, so much great feedback from those encounters. It's just really a space to say, we know that you want to encounter the Lord and we want to partner with you in doing that and agree with what the Lord has for your life. After that, we have a break for dinner and all of that. And then we come back at seven and we have the gathering. And the gathering is just, we make space to really lean in and be obedient to what the Lord is calling us to do. So it looks different. You know, it's not always the same. Sometimes worship goes longer and sometimes there's teaching and sometimes there's just ministry, but we wanna invite you to that. Another opportunity for you just to come and get fed and encounter the Lord. So that is next Saturday. Is that correct? Yes, so this Saturday, as in six days. Yes, so we would love to see you here. And then for those of you that have youth, there is no youth today. We will not be having it. So with that, let me just pray and open us up and we will welcome John. So Father, again, we just thank you. We thank you, Papa, for your goodness and your kindness. We thank you that we have the privilege and honor of gathering as a community to worship you, to encounter you, to love you, and to be loved by you. You are so good. So, Father, as we hear this message from John today, Holy Spirit, come. Prick our hearts for those places, those deep places in us that need to hear this word. God, would we be open to that? And, Father, as John has taught this weekend, would you give him strength to continue and energy to continue and just ears to hear what you want to pour out to this body? We thank you for him. We thank you for his leadership. We thank you for his care. We love you and we bless you. We want all that you have for us, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So actually, before I start, Charity, why don't you come back up real quick? So some of you know this, some of you don't. Charity is heading out on Wednesday to go to India to be with our team in India. And she's going to be teaching uh, with the streams team. She's also going to be able to minister at a home with 16 um, foster children uh, that are there. And so we just want to bless her and send her out. So um, if we could just real quickly, if the elders just come up, let's just lay hands on her. We're gonna, we're just gonna send her out with a blessing. At least the ones that are in the room. <laughs> Father, we thank you. We thank you for the call that is on Charity's life to, to share your beauty, to share your word, and to minister healing to those that are broken. Lord, we send her to India. We send her to take all that you have put on streams and to release it to those that she meets, to multiply to multiply what you've been doing. Lord, we bless her in the name of Jesus. Anoint her. Speak to her. Give her clarity like she's never known. Give her revelation like she's never known. Lord, release healing through her. Physical healing and heart healing. Lord, release greater authority over the demonic that, that the oppressed would be set free. We bless her with the kingdom to accomplish your purposes every place she goes in the name of Jesus Christ. Thanks. 
Thank you, Father. Wow. Amen. Amen. We've had the privilege to partner with a team in India for a number of years now. And they're a, a, a group of churches and church planters and have been just pressing in to see the kingdom expand and to minister to those that are in desperate need. And we've been helping them with resources on hearing God and um, the Art of Hearing God course. For those of you that have taken that is, um, it's as much about character and maturity as it is about the ability to hear from God. And that has been a kind of a core part of their discipleship for church planters uh, that they send out. And we, we have a number of streams teachers that are there. And we have a team that goes on a regular basis. So they're there, um, well, before COVID. And then we're starting again a couple times a year uh, ministering to pastors and leaders. And so it's great that Charity gets to go and be a part of that. I, I was able to go in 2016 and help to teach about 100 pastors to teach the art of hearing God. Um, and then I was blacklisted and am no longer able to go into India. So I will not get to go back unless something changes. But we're, we're still sending people and making sure that things continue. Yay. It's exciting stuff. It means it's working, yes. <laughs> it means it's working. Yeah. Well, I am, I'm going to continue. We, we've been doing a, a series. I know we have a, a lot of guests that are with us, some from the weekend, some that are visiting. But um, we've been doing a series on prayer. And I think this is going to go for a while because it's one of those places that you can never exhaust the, the things that you can learn about the life of prayer. We, we, we will be... I, well, there will be a time when we see him fully and says we will know him even as we are fully known. I have no idea what prayer is going to look like then. Uh, but until that moment when we are face to face with him, we're never going to stop growing in the life of prayer. Uh, and the gathering of believers, like what we're doing this morning, is intended to be a place where, where we come and bring this culmination of our lives with God and encourage one another to continue to expand this kingdom in whatever area that we find ourselves. The, the church gathering is not where the kingdom is expanded. It's where the kingdom expanders are encouraged to go out and expand the kingdom because, you know, like Wimber used to say, the meat is in the street. Real Christianity happens outside of these walls. This is where we learn and grow and pray for one another, encourage one another. But our life with God is that place that allows this to carry something more powerful. And so my hope is to really encourage a, a life of prayer because there, there is not a greater calling that anyone can have than the calling to have a life of prayer. We've been called into relationship and, and unlike any other kind of faith, any other kind of religion, this relationship that we've been called into is an actual interaction of the heart. That He loves us and we love Him and, and we get to spend time with Him and He longs to spend time with us more than we long to spend time with Him. We talk about relationship, one of the core um, things, I don't know what to call it, one of the core things, <laughs> important areas when it comes to relationship is communication. It, you can tell the strength of any relationship by the communication that happens in that relationship. And so when it comes to our relationship with God, our communication with God is absolutely Core. And if there's going to be a true relationship, one of the aspects of communication it has to be honest communication. It's not telling the other person what they want to hear. That creates a false relationship, a, a, a fake sense of 
intimacy, but it does not create true intimacy. And, and God is going to be absolutely honest with us. If you've been around him for any period of time, he, he doesn't pull any punches. He tells us the truth. He is absolutely loving and absolutely encouraging, but he is absolutely honest. And he has called us to have that same honesty with him. And so I want to talk today about prayers that heal the heart. A, a, an aspect of our prayer life that brings that, that sense of honesty into the difficult things that we face, because every single one of us are going to face difficult things. Nobody gets a, a free pass on life where we get to hit the easy button and then everything just kind of lines up and it's perfect. So we get to go through difficulties. So the first area of honesty is talking about honesty with our pain. Let's go to Psalms. One of the best places to learn how to pray is to read the Psalms until you find your heart being echoed in one of the psalms and then just stay there until that echo diminishes. Then you find another psalm because every part of the heart, every season of the heart will be found in the psalm somewhere. Psalm chapter 56, verse 8. The psalmist says this, You have kept count of my tossings. Put my tears in your bottle. Are they not in your book? Sometimes there's this idea of prayer. It's we, we, we come and we tell God how, how many great things we're going to do for Him. Or how many great things that we need Him to do for us. And it becomes about things instead of about feelings. Conversations about things only go so deep. But when you start talking about feelings, there's true connection that gets communicated. And God cares for the things that we go through. When, when we're dealing with difficulties, he, he, He's watching. You, you ever spend a, a sleepless night where you're just tossing and turning? Trying to figure out how do I handle this? I don't know what to do. He watches every single tossing. You ever, you ever cried tears because you, you didn't understand? Because of the things that you lost or the things that, that didn't come through, the pain that you're going through, every single tear he holds in a bottle, they're precious to him. He, he, he doesn't just wipe them away and throw it away so he can ignore them. He, he carries them and he remembers every single one of them. This is the, the intimacy that he has with us. Ecclesiastes 9.2 gives us, I know the writer of Ecclesiastes is going through a bout of depression, but there's some truth also in there as well. But he tells us something that's really important that we sometimes forget, especially in charismatic Christianity, when we, we have this great faith for the miraculous and for breakthrough Sometimes there's this idea that if we had enough faith or we did this Christian thing right, that we would be able to escape difficulties. But verse two, it says, it is the same for all since the same event happens to the righteous and the wicked, to the good and the evil, to the clean and the unclean, to him who sacrifices and him who does not sacrifice. As the good one is, so is the sinner, and he who swears as he who shuns an oath. Meaning, you're going to go through difficult situations. We don't get the free pass, but this, this is what we do get. When you go through the difficult situations, you have somebody that's not going to leave you. You have someone that's going to be with you in the pain in the questions, in the confusion, in, in that in-between space where we're trying to figure out what this new reality that has been thrust upon us is going to be. He is there with us through it all. I, I've talked to, to uh, <laughs> one particular conversation I have in my mind. I was talking to this couple that they, they had been kind of nice Christians and they went to church, but they didn't have a real vibrant relationship with the Lord. 
And then they met the Lord and they, they, they started to understand this, this life of the spirit and understand spiritual warfare. And it seemed like their, their life started falling apart. And, and in the conversation I was having with them, they were telling me like, we, we just want to go back to being nice Christians and forget this charismatic stuff so that we can go back to our normal life. I'm like, you know, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> it doesn't actually happen. You, you can't get away from the difficulties. There will come a day when he will remove all pain, all sorrow, all sickness, all death. There will be no more mourning. There will be no more crying, but that day is not yet. But here and now, we have one that will never leave us and never forsake us, and he's not afraid of our pain. I mean, you go through the Psalms. He, he's not afraid of our questions. Yeah, the psalmist, oh God, where are you? Everything's going backwards. The wicked, they're, everything's going good for them and I'm trying to do the right thing and everything's going wrong for me. I mean, did you forget about us? Did you, you know, close your eyes? Like, I don't understand this yet. Yet I, I can't get away from the fact that you're with me. I, I know it's not gonna be like this forever, but this hurts. And he, and he turns that pain into his remembrance. And God was not afraid of the pain enough that he wrote it in the book so that people would forever have a way to deal with the pains that they go through. That we would know that he's not afraid of that pain. We have God with us. Psalm 34, verse 8. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in Him. We get to run to Him. We get to find that place of companionship you will never be alone when you have invited him in he is with us he redeems our pain and he brings healing so how do we pray through our pain God I hurt I don't like this help heal me change me Free me, deliver me. I know you're near. I, I don't feel it, but I know you're near. We, we, we cry out for his comfort in that place. About 25 years ago, my brother, who is my best friend, we worked together. We, were, uh, we lived together at the time. Um, we just actually had just moved out and was living with Donna at this point decides that he's going to go back to Jehovah's Witnesses and he sits me down and says John if you didn't preach Jesus I would still talk to you but because you're apostate I can never talk to you again and that was the last real conversation that I had with my brother and I went back to our apartment and I picked up my guitar remember that song Draw Me Close to You I think I sang that song for about two hours straight tears just running down Lord you're worth it this is the worst thing that's ever happened at that moment I don't know I'm sure worse things had happened but in that moment it felt like my world had ended and yet he came in the middle of that pain. And he is redeemed and restored. He, 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 he gave places. Now, I, I still have that gap. And there's times when I still have to come back to that place. I, I have this memory of hanging out with my brother. And, and, uh, and I have to come back to that place. But God, but God. I mean, we could go through story after story in this room of the pains that we've felt. Don't be afraid of your pain. He, he's not trying to get you past it so that he can be okay with you. 
He wants to be with you through it. Through to the redemption, to the healing. And the thing about pain and grief is it never goes back to the way it was, but there is a new normal that you can find where you will always have a gap, but you'll always find something new. And when you can get to that place in God, then you can move forward with healing. Honest with our pain. Here's another one. Be honest with our past. Take a look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Somebody once said, every saint has a past and every sinner has a future. Sometimes we forget our past because we're trying to be good Christians. Sometimes we, we hide the stories of what we came through. Like God would be embarrassed to be associated with someone like who I used to be. But he actually celebrates. You ever read the Bible? <laughs> like the people that he calls his friends. Noah gets drunk and strips himself naked. All right, a Abraham has a baby with his wife's slave. Peter can't keep his foot out of his mouth. David finds the girl next door and then kills her husband so he can keep her and he doesn't get caught. And these are the people that God associates with. And we, we, we come into the church and we kind of pretend like, you know, the, I don't know, the do-goody club or what, what do we want to call that? Like we, we've all got to have it all together to be able to be here, but Christianity is the only club where you have to be bad enough to get in. <laughs> if you don't think you have a problem, you don't belong in Christianity because He came for the sinners and He came for the sick. He didn't come for those that have no problems. He came for those with problems. But we, we get this idea sometimes, like we're, we're embarrassed to share the, the reality of our stories with God. Well, you know, I'm just going to move on. I've got this, this new life. I'm going to, you know, just ignore everything from the past. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, start in verse 9. Might not make sense till we get to verse 11, but you'll understand where I'm going there. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. But such were some of you. This is the early church. They were made up of sexually immoral, homosexuals, thieves, drunkards, swindlers, but they weren't that anymore. They were that, but they weren't that anymore. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. You know, there's this, this thing of shame that hangs over people that says that if somebody really knew who you actually were, they couldn't love you. If they actually knew everything that you had done, you couldn't be loved. And that voice of shame, it haunts so many people that they're afraid to talk about what they came out of. And it hides, it hangs over our relationship with God. We, we, we just want to move on really quick. What we were does not determine what we are. What we did does not determine what we will do. Our past does not determine our future. Jesus determines our future. And Paul was honest again and again about the fact that he killed Christians. That would be an interesting one. How, how many times do we have preachers getting up talking about their murderous past? 
But that's what Paul did. Like, I, I, I persecuted our brothers and sisters. I was the one killing them. This is honesty that we need. Now, part of that is, is we get to pray through the memories because as long as we try to ignore our past, our past will haunt us. You actually have to deal with the past to move on from the past. Because in, until you've dealt with that, it, it, it haunts you. It hangs right here. And that question, can you really be loved, will never be answered until you've been honest with your past. It gets answered when somebody knows every secret and they still look you in the face and you can still see affection. And our God does that for us. I don't even know how I knew to do this. I, now, I know now I could, we could give a lot of Scripture. I'm not going to go into it. But when, when I found the Lord, I, I, I would have these moments where I, I would be driving down the road or I was you know, working construction at the time. I'm hanging drywall or whatever I was doing. And this memory would come up, something that, that happened from my past. Um, well, it's the first one that came to mind. And my first thought was, don't share that one. So that's probably the one that I need to share. <laughs> Got to practice what you preach, right? <laughs> I had a 12-inch butcher knife in my hand. I was about six years old, chasing my little sister around the house. When my dad finally heard the screaming, he came and grabbed that out of my hand and beat me pretty good I just have a memory like that and I would just immediately oh God I'm so sorry I did that forgive me Lord Lord forgive my dad he didn't know how to handle his fear I would just start to pray through I would repent I would forgive and I'd begin to pray for salvation, whoever it was. The, the people that were involved, the ones that hurt me the most, the ones that I hurt the most, those, those were the harder ones. It was easier to deal with the people that hurt me. It was a lot harder to deal with the ones that I'd hurt. And just every single time the memory would come up, I would feel something on it. I, I would just begin to pray through it. I'd repent. I'd forgive and I'd pray for salvation. I'd ask God to bless them. I'd ask God to move in their lives. And, and I, just, that, I just went through every memory as they came up and they came up until the memories stopped having that weight of emotion on them. And they got processed through. Now, I didn't realize that I was walking myself through deliverance and inner healing. <laughs> it's just what came out of me when the memory came up because the Holy Spirit in me wasn't afraid of that. When you begin to be honest with your past, you, you, you don't have to push past it too quickly. God is not afraid of it. You can just talk to him about it. And every time that weight of emotion comes up again, you just bring it back to him and you talk to him about it again. And you know that you've been honest because it gets less and less and less and it stops controlling you and it stops ruling you and you find yourself coming into the nature of Christ instead of the nature of your pain instead of the nature of your past you find yourself being transformed into a new creation through processing through those things it's what we call sanctification healing be honest so when there's a memory that has emotion, forgive, repent, bless. And when accusation comes, or you, I mean, you're disqualified. Do you remember what you did? That, that one, that accusation, when that comes, remember what scripture says. You're a new creation. The old things are past. That person is dead. 
I mean, it took a couple years, but I, I genuinely, I remember some of the stuff that I did, and, and it's not like it's my memory. I, I'm, it's like I'm remembering a movie that I saw at some point in time. I, I'm not connected to that thing anymore. It's, it, it's like, who, who was that person? I can't even identify with that person anymore because there's such a transformation that came from that processing. I, I am a new creation. That person is dead. That person paid the price for what they did. Death. And they're never, never coming out of that grave. But there's something new that's here. I would just remind yourself of that new creation. Remind yourself that you are chosen. Ephesians chapter 1. I love this verse. Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as He chose us in Him before the foundations of the world. Now, think about this really quick. Does God know the future? Yes. Clearly, we, we have plenty of proof. Like he, he prophesied stuff a thousand years, 300 years, 700 years, 50 years, two hours before it happened. We have story after story after story after story after story. He's proven he knows the future. Before he created anything, he saw you. Not up until one moment, but he saw you until you breathe your last, I mean, until through all of eternity. Like, he, he saw you and he chose you. Which means he saw your weakness, he saw your sin, he saw your mistakes, he saw your failure, he saw your rebellion, he saw your strengths, he saw all of that and he still chose you. He, he, he said, this, this is one that I want. Yes, they're, they're mine. He's not surprised by the things that we do. He hurts for some of the things that we do. And he gets really excited about some of the things that we do, but he's not surprised by any of it. He knew you. Like Larry Randolph, the way he says it, it gives me hope. When God determined your destiny, he factored in your stupidity. He already knew. <laughs> All of that was taken into account and he still chose who you are and what you will do. Even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, why did he chose us? choose us? That we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption. When, when, when he saw you in your pain, in your stupid mistakes, in all of that, his heart moved in love and he said, I'm going to adopt them. They're mine. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make something out of this. This, this, I want this one. They please me. I love them. <laughs> And we just remind ourselves. We come back to that again and again and again. God, I don't know what you were thinking when you chose me, but you chose me. You already knew. Th this isn't a disqualification. Lord, I, I, I'm, I'm giving you this pain again. When the accusation comes, just know. He, he already he, he gave me a future before I had that past. And he hasn't changed it. And we just come back again and again and again. We just keep on coming back to that reality of his love. Telling him in our prayers. So we're honest with our pain. We're honest with our past. And we're honest with our fears. First Peter chapter 5.
Verse 7 says, Casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. Now, just picture in your head casting anything. Let, you know, pick up a book or piece of paper. How do you cast it? Throw it. Which means it has to be in your hand before it leaves your hand. You can't cast away anxieties that you don't own. If you don't realize that you're in, they're in your hand, you're ignoring them, you're not casting them away. Lord, I, I, I'm anxious about this. I, I'm fearful. I don't know how this is going to happen. Lord, I, I, I'm scared right now. <laughs> I give you that fear. because I, I mean, you, you could do stuff that I don't understand, so I, I, I'm giving it to you, but you, you have to actually be honest with it. So, some of us think that if we're going to be spiritual, we have to pretend that we don't have any fear. The Bible says, do not fear. Well, it says do not fear because we're afraid. <laughs> right? So we're getting there, but we are here. If you tried to give yourself directions to a destination by pre pretending you're at the destination, what, what's your path forward? <laughs> oh, I'm here. But if you're not at your destination, what do you do? You end up getting stuck where you're at instead of getting to where you're going you have to be honest with where you're at if you're going to move forward if you're not honest with where you're at you cannot move forward and god is not afraid of where you're at but i i don't understand this i, I i'm i'm scared things don't make sense i i don't see a path forward i god you care I'm trusting you to help me. Take a look at Psalm 31. Psalm 31, and we're going to look at verses 12 through 16. It can't be, well, no. I went to the wrong one. I went to chapter 26, and there's not 16 verses. I was like, wait a second, did I write that down wrong? All right. Psalm 31, starting in verse 12. I've been forgotten like one who is dead. Anybody ever prayed a prayer like that? If you haven't, it's a good prayer to pray. It's actually, it's in the book. You know, God's okay with you saying that. We get this religious mindset, like I've got to pretend that I'm not there. You can't have a relationship that's built upon falsehood. If you are not honest, it's not real. It's not a real relationship. I've been forgotten like one who is dead. I've become like a broken vessel. I hear the whispering of many, terror on every side, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. But I trust in you, O Lord. I say you are my God. Notice, I don't trust in my revelation to get me out of this. I don't trust in my understanding of the scriptural principles to get me through this. I trust in you, O oh God. My times are in your hand. Rescue me from the hand of my enemies and from my persecutors. Make your face shine on your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. See, God is not afraid of our honesty. When we're going, when we're in that place of fear, of, of anxiety, we process through, we don't process to. We don't get into the place of anxiety, start being anxious, being honest about it, and then just stay there and hold on to it. We give it to Him. And we recognize we've given it to Him because it begins to subside. And so if it hasn't subsided, you haven't actually given it to Him. We process through. We, we keep on giving it to Him until it begins to come off of us. We remind ourselves of who He is in the midst of it, holding on to that truth, which begins to allow that, that concern, that anxiety begin to go away because we, we try, I, I can't figure this out, but you're bigger than me and you actually care. I'm, I can trust you. Don't get stuck in the pain. 
Get it in your hand and cast it to Him. Give it to Him. Learn how to take those things. So, sometimes I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of a visual person. I, I will literally, I'll visualize something in my hands and I visualize putting it at the foot of the cross. I, I, I see the, where it comes out of the ground. Like I, I've got a good imagination so I can picture it right now. I, I can see the, the nail going through the feet and the blood dripping down. I can look up and I can look at his eyes looking at me with love in the midst of that pain and I lay it down at the foot of the cross. Now maybe you're not that visual. Maybe, maybe it's just the, the words of saying, Lord, I lay it down. I lay it down. I lay it down. However you do that, lay it down. Give it to Him. Let Him take it. You, you, you can't Continue to hold on to that and move forward because as long as you hold on to it, you're stuck where you're at. You can't get into the future holding on to the past. You've got to let it go. Give it to Him and then you can start to move forward. Second Chronicles chapter 20 has a story where, where the enemy is coming and they're, they're going to be facing this army that's way too big for them. And Jehoshaphat <laughs> prays one of my favorite prayers in all of Scripture. Lord, we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. I, I, I do not have the great wisdom and the great revelation on how to get this thing out, out, out of this thing. But trusting you, so <laughs> help. <laughs> and he does. And it's in times like that, sometimes we just, we become different. And nothing changes, but we're different. And it's easier. Sometimes he just does a miracle and things change. Sometimes he gives us revelation, says, here's your strategy. Here's how you do it. But it's in that place of prayer, in that place of relationship. This circumstance in Second Chronicles 20, they get a prophetic word. You're not even going to have to fight. I'm going to take care of this for you. And instead of continuing on and trying to figure out how they were going to handle it, they just, they switched the way that they thought about it. Okay, well, Lord, if that's what you're saying, we, we trust you. And they trusted him to such an extent that when they went out to battle, they put the musicians out front. Do you know how hard it is to hold a shield and a sword while you're playing an instrument? Kind of doesn't work. Like they actually believed that God was going to do something or else they had a death wish, one of the two. They really trusted. They heard from God and they trusted what he said and they went forward as if what God said was true already. That's real trust. Moving forward as if what God said was true already. That's faith. When he speaks, we let it change. We, we stop allowing ourselves to rehearse what the enemy is saying, what, what the situation says. There's no way that you can win that. It doesn't make sense. There's 10 times more enemy than there are you. You're dead. I am not going to pay attention to what my eyes see. You have spoken. I'm going to trust you now. And then our prayer goes from the place of trying to figure things out to the place of, God, I, I've, I've got to trust you. I want to trust you. I think I trust you. I'm still, we, we hold on. We wrestle with that until we come to that place of trust and we watch him move on our behalf. Lord, this is how I feel. What do you say? Almost a year ago, I had a, a dream. It was October the 9th. Let me find this real quick. Because I want to read it word for word. lest I misquote it. It's actually two years ago, October the 9th, 2021. 
A lot of you know Brian Barnett. He's one of our leaders, helps out with our monthly gathering. And this dream, I was in a meeting with Brian, and we left the meeting, we were driving together. And as we're driving, I start talking to him. I said, I, I believe that we are coming into a time when the enemy is going to try to attack someone and they're just gonna start laughing and say, is that the best you got? Jesus, the enemy is attacking me. He's no match for you. Would you take care of him? Now, the, this, the mindset behind it, like, and I in, in dreams and revelations, a lot of times you understand a lot more than what is actually in the script, right? Like I understood, like this had nothing to do with being flippant about the reality of the warfare. And it had nothing to do with mocking the enemy. It was just absolute trust in realizing how big my God is compared to how small this situation is. Yeah. Like, okay, yeah, I mean, the enemy's doing something, but God, you're really huge. So, hey, um, I can't do anything, would you? And that absolute trust and God's ability to protect I, I want to encourage you that it doesn't take revelation to realize that that is what God wants for us. It's all over Scripture. He says it again and again and again and again and again. I will protect you. Lord, you are my rock. You are my refuge. You're my stronghold. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are saved. Is my arm too short that I cannot save? There is nothing impossible for me. If God is for us, who can be against us? Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. We, we, we have so many promises of his desire to help us. We don't have to be afraid when we're going through something to go and ask for help because because there's nothing that's too hard for him. There's nothing that he can't do. There's no battle that he cannot win. He is the Lord. He is victorious every single time. And he took that victory all the way into death and raised himself back up. But there's nothing impossible for our God. And there's no situation that you face that he does not care and that he will not help you with now he may walk with you through it sometimes we go through difficult things he, he may completely change it but he will not allow the enemy to have his way with you if you submit to him draw near to God submit to him resist the enemy and the enemy will flee so when you find the enemy attacking your place, draw near to God. Draw near to God and trust Him. So, be honest with your pain. He's not afraid of your pain. Be honest with your past. He's not ashamed. He chose you and He already knew it. <laughs> he also knew your future. You can be honest with Him. Be honest with your fears. Because he will be with you in it and he will protect you. And he will deliver you. That's our God. Amen? Amen. 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 Well, Father, we thank you that you, <laughs> you didn't leave us on our own and you didn't ask us to pretend. You didn't call us to religious activity. You called us to relationship. Lord, where we have been afraid of our pain, Lord, would you come and would you bring healing? Lord, there, there's, there's loss. Like I, I know some of the stories in this room and I know I don't know them all. There's loss in this room. And Lord, there's healing in this room. But some of us are still walking through it. Lord, would you draw near? Lord, would you teach us how to develop intimacy with you in the place of pain, not to be afraid of, not to feel abandoned? 
but to find your presence and to hold on to you. Would you teach us how to have conversations with you in every season of the soul? Lord, for those where that voice of shame has kept them hiding from their past, Lord, would you walk them through the process of healing and freedom from all that the enemy tried to do to them and all that they did to themselves, all that other people did to them. Lord, would you wash away that mark of shame and not let people hide from you, but let them feel your tenderness and your care, the compassion that you have for them, that they would, they would be drawn in unafraid Lord for those that are facing situations where it's, it's just scary whether it's a physical situation a relational situation a financial situation Lord help them to be honest with the fear not to hold on to it but to give it to you and find your comfort drawing them in. Lord, teach us how to be honest. We need the spirit of truth to move in our midst, O oh God. So we welcome you. Teach us intimacy. Lord, we, we continue to ask that you would give a spirit of prayer to each person. Lord, that our time with you, that it would be so rich, it would just increase. Lord, that we would be hungrier and hungrier to be with you, to talk to you, to spend time with you, to worship you, to love on you. Lord, not for our sake, but for your sake. that we would find that freedom. We would find that sense of home that is only found in your heart. In Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Wow. Well, we always want to make room for prayer some of you, you you just whether it's something that came up while I was talking or you're just going through something and you want prayer from someone um, what we do is we you know we're all uh, anointed by the Spirit of God to minister to one another and so we're going to pray for one another if you want prayer for anything if you just stand up where you're at we're going to get a couple people just to come gather around you they're going to ask you what it is you want prayer for and pray for you and we're going to ask God to come and, and do what only He can do. So if that's you, just stand up wherever you're at. And this is how we're going to end our service, just by praying for one another. So if we have a couple people, just look around, find someone that's standing, gather around them. Let's pray for one another. Let's see what God wants to do. For those of you that joined us online, we bless you. We'll see you next week. This is how we're going to end our service.